Okay guys, so today we're gonna to talk about a little different thing than the hurricane stuff. One thing that our company does is we're a CLEC and we build fiber optic networks. In working with the fiber optic world, we also have some folks that we work with that do like festivals and events where they need to set up fiber optic cables temporarily or in a, in a place where they're gonna have say a festival or music festival and they need to do point of sale and they need to do cameras or you know move the internet around for the guests. So one thing that we're trying and this is kind of proof of concept so y'all can go right along with the process. So we got a bunch of blank spools like over there on that pallet and I'm gonna show you what our thought process is. So we, this is left over from my fireworks world but, and this one's not the right diameter. We're gonna make the center of this more like the center of this. But anyway, this spool here and it locks in and we wind off 500 feet of this cable and this is a drop cable and we'll go in the conference room in just a second and we'll show you the construction. We can see that we've got two white strength members on the outside and then in the middle there's 12 fibers. The concept is gonna be, now this reel, we've wound down 500 feet of this drop fiber. And this drop fiber is interesting because it had those strength members that we showed you inside and it can self-support itself. It's factory rated, I think, for 200 feet or 250 feet. And so then we call this a mini wall and this is a wall mount enclosure that we've come in here and we've fusion spliced this uh, ribbon cable. That's the breakout. And then behind it, right there, that's a fusion splice. So it allows us to, to, to fusion splice 12 fibers all at the same time. So then these are Sam Charlie or SC connectors. We're gonna try some with LCs, but LC, Lima Charlie, they're, they're real delicate. So right here at first for this proof of concept, we're gonna do SC and then the guy that's doing the fiber deployment, he could do an SC to an LC jumper. And that the jumper could almost be disposable. So we're gonna mount this onto the spool rack here. The rod or the center spool will still go through there. We're gonna take another one of these spools apart. And we're gonna put some out here to protect it. So this will be there. And then we're gonna show you how we did the deployment. So right here, you can see this is the end of the spool and you can see that we heat shrunk it. And we had these made up special. This is a tight tube house cable. So each of the 12 individual strands are broken out in this and they were fusion spliced to a uh, ribbon cable like this. Again, this is like a house ribbon cable. Inside of there, there, trust me, there's a ribbon. So we took this loose tube guy and we ran him in here. So we're gonna try to do this for proof of concepts. Let's say that your fiber optic provider for an event or a special, or like when we're on a hurricane, a deployable application where we need to run fiber cable temporarily for a week or a month. We're gonna try to use these spools and we're gonna create them in 500 feet, 750 feet and 1,000 feet. And we're gonna see how durable we can make this. So now we're gonna talk real quick about how we did the architecture of this and maybe this will be helpful for somebody trying to build a deployable fiber infrastructure thing. I know people are going to comment in the video that you could go and use an armored cable and we've tried to use that armored cable but the way it works is it has a sort of a helically wound piece of stainless steel and it works really well for the cable but if you if you kink it or turn it or anything happens in that stainless steel it tends to shear on itself and it actually becomes what cuts the fiber. This stuff is very durable now it won't deploy well because of the twist and all that and you can sort of see that you know with just me handling this piece here but but once it's laid down it's got this hard outer shell and if it's laying flat you know semi trucks can run over it and it's a pretty durable construction so we'll talk about how we did this connection and then you guys can follow along and when we deploy it then we'll make a follow-on video to see if it works and this might be something that you guys want to contemplate doing in your own uh, temporary deployed fiber system. Inside of this cable, so I'm gonna draw sort of a cross-section view of it. And so what it has is it has this strength member here. And then in the center of it, it has a loose tube. And so inside this loose tube of this cable, this is where all 12 fibers run. And so, and there's some airman yarns and different things to make up this. So this is the outer sheath. And then these are those fiberglass central strength members that are not central, but they're on the side. I said central because in a traditional cable, a lot of times the strength members in the center and then all these loose tubes will follow around the cable. And if you know, if you're familiar with fiber, you know, there's 12 fibers per tube and see some of these tubes because they have 12 tubes. So you have a 144 count fiber here. We just have 12 fibers because there's only one tube. But anyway, so what we did is, is then we took and we took and spliced this cable. And so these strength members are kind of running like this down through here. And what we did is we let them continue on down. And this won't be quite the scale, but you'll get the concept. So we have the strength member here and it continued on through and we cut it. 
and then we had this central loo loose tube piece that went to here <clears throat> and actually we cut it back to right here and then we let the raw fibers come out here and then what we did we ribbonized these loose tube fibers so then we create this ribbon of these fibers and here we, we cleaved it off. So this whiteboard is su super effective for that. So then we cleaved it off and then we put a fusion splice over this cleaved off portion. We tried two different concepts. Here's the fusion splice from the factory where we bought these has seized term terminated back to this is a, uh, we call this a house cable and it has the ribbon inside of it. And then we put our splice in there. So we tried it two different ways. You can see we incorporated here a lot of the uh, heat shrink to protect it. And then in this one, we utilize the house cable out a little bit farther. So we're gonna see which one tends to be more robust. So here we have our heat shrink protecting this heat shrink and this ribbon splice, and then our ribbon splice is in there. So that's how the architecture of this broke out. And so our thought process was, if we could get these strength members and then our splice, and then it comes out to the, their heat shrink, and then it broke out to each of the individual colors, you know, blue, orange, green, brown. What we thought that this would protect it. And so we would, on each side of this, we put a piece of this strength member in here to protect this cable and to protect it here to give us a way that we're holding these strength members apart so that when we put the heat shrink tubing across this whole system, we would shrink it back. And then we did three layers of heat shrink to try to build up the robustness of this fusion splice because this 12 ribbon fusion splice tends to be the weak point. These are kind of projects that we work on here at Parker sometimes. We're learning and maybe you're learning because we're looking for something that has the robustness of this cable and when we're trying to work out a way to get this in. Now, I don't know exactly what the material is called. They make a piece of material that's like a woven nylon and it's like a Chinese pulling grip finger. You've seen like if you put your finger in one of those things, you pull it apart. Well, they make this and we're gonna make a cover that covers over this and create a pulling eye so that when they deploy it, they're pulling on this on the fiber and these are protected with that, that sleeve and see if we can get it done. And then maybe in the future, you know, it just struck me, we might could have like staggered these connections so that, you know, they would fit in the pulling eye, you know, like that, or maybe two off and two off and two off. So anyway, we're just gonna give you a little catch up, a uh, homemade deployable fiber that maybe is robust enough that it can work in the field. Might be something you're interested in. This is an example of what we're trying to get away from or eliminate. So this is a piece of indoor outdoor rated riser rated fiber. So it has airman yarn inside of it. It has a pretty good rigidity and then it breaks out into that tight buffer. And you see, so you have two of them. So like you see how we have a piece of mule tape and we deploy it and it goes over here to this little box, SC connectors breaking out to an SC bulkhead in there, going to an LC connector, which is, this is the LC Lima Charlie. And you can see this is on a little Unify switch, but it goes into the SFP. And so you see you have your LC to SC. So by making those reels where we have 500 feet deployed, this will be something that we could even use on our hurricanes because see, we, we run this cable in between the three trailers so that we push our internet around, Wi-Fi around, cameras around, and they, we bring them back to here. So that's kind of the problem we're doing. If we had a place that we could deploy that out, run that cable through there, and you see how you couldn't get that mini wall through that three inch hole. And in some of the trailers, it's a two inch feed through. So that's why he wants to try to go with something that's deployable because you know when we go down the road, this is the way it is. And then we can drop the cable out. So that's the problem we're trying to solve by getting the 12 fiber density from place to place to place. So in about the same size, double the size, the uh, drop fiber is a lot more durable. I don't know if y'all can see how flexible this is. If you know, if it was, if a guy walks over this and steps on the rock, it'll shear it and cut it where that ribbon fiber, you could drive a truck over it. So we're just trying to come up with a deployable solution that we can utilize or this guy can use and we can utilize. If you have any comments, we'd love for you to comment down below and tell us if you've had any applications or doing this. We're kind of showing you what we're trying to do and then maybe you guys could help us with any kind of applications you did. I will tell you that my idea to this customer was for him to deploy the mini wall on the end of this because I could make this super robust 
and make it where it could do it and he could have sacrificial SC or SC to SC or SC to LC jumpers and deploy them and use the jumpers a couple of times and then trash them and let them be sacrificial. But he really wanted this for the flexibility because, you know, he's pulling over fences in and out of buildings and those kind of applications and he felt this would be too cumbersome on the end. So anyway, put it in the comments, like, subscribe. If you like these kind of videos, just, you know, comment down and let us know. And if you've had any experience, we'd love to hear it.